What is good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Littles Asakor, the one who never knows best. And in today's video, we have a ton of interesting Tekken 8 data to go over. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. If I move over to my monitor, you can see I'm over on Reddit, which by the way, I'm several days late to this. As you can see, uh, I don't use Reddit as a platform. I, I just, I don't even have a Reddit account. So stuff like this, I I, I kind of miss it until it makes its way to Twitter. And then I see it, I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. Let me take a look at that. And if it's interesting enough, I want to talk about it with you guys, whether that's on stream or in a video or both. So here today, we have a second look at the Tekken 8 metagame based on data gathered from replays. So this comes to us from Reddit user, not quite factual, who is the same uh, person, player, uh, Redditor that brought us the previous infographic information that I made that I covered in the uh, how good is your Tekken 8 rank video. In that video, we went over the rank distribution, but today we have rank distribution, character popularity, win rates, and all that good stuff to talk about, take a look at today. So we have some charts and some graphs and everything. We're gonna take a look about that, analyze it, discuss it. But quickly, I just wanted to read uh, some of the stuff that he wrote here. And it says, bottom line up front, I wrote some code to collect replay data from the replays uh, screen in game. I gathered around 664,335 sheesh replays and compiled some very rudimentary stats. This is a follow up to my previous post on this topic. And then here's some charts. And the first one gets into his rank distribution. But before we get into the rank distribution, I actually want to scroll down a little bit and read what he reads uh, or what he writes here in the introduction and whatnot. So. Two weeks back, I made a post where I calculated character play and win rates, as well as the rank distribution by sampling replays gathered in the Tekken 8 replays list. This time I have come back with a second look based off considerably more data, almost 10 times as much, and with some better compiled charts. Moving along, he says, first I gathered the 600,000 plus replays. I then iterated over these replays to extract unique players. Only the highest ranking player achieved was considered for the rank distribution. Similarly, only the highest ranked character for a given player was considered for the character play rates. Character win rates were based off of the entire data set. I also split players into beginner, intermediate, and advanced tiers based on their rank. I won't get too hung up on this about what's beginner, what's intermediate, or what's advanced. He did it for the sake of categorizing the data and making it easier to digest and understand. Uh, but basically, beginner to yellow ranks were considered as beginners. Orange and red ranks were marked as intermediate, and purple and above were denoted as advanced players. Now, obviously, you might have your own opinion or your own perspective on what's considered advanced to high level or whatnot. That could be lower than purple. That could be higher than purple. That part's not really that important. We can talk about that at another date. But for win rates at these ranks, only games where both players were in this tier were considered. For example, a game between a Mighty Ruler and a Vanquisher would not be considered for the advanced win rate chart. Additionally, mirror matches and draws were excluded from win rate calculations. As always, the code I used for this investigation can be found at his GitHub. Now, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the first chart that we see here. And here we have the rank distribution. So as you can see, Worth noting, God of you still the most populated rank in the entire game. When I last covered rank distribution, we saw that the red ranks were actually very populated and that God of you was the highest rank or not the highest rank, but the most populated rank in the game. And that is still very much the case. A bit later on, he actually has some data that shows the percentiles of all the ranks. So we'll go ahead and get to that later. But I just want to make a note of that. But for the most part, things are about as you would expect. Uh, the red ranks are very populated. There's a huge fall off when you get to Shin Ryu. I feel like a, a lot of players, they set red ranks like as their goal. And once they get there, they either stop playing red or they switch to another character and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever but that's just a, a repeated like pattern of behavior that i've noticed among a, a large number of players and you guys can feel free to let me know in the comments if you notice the same thing or if you in fact do that yourself where it's like yeah i made it to, to red ranks that's I, I, I succeeded, I, I beat Tekken onto the next or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So whether that's people just start uh, go and start playing casual matches, they stop playing Tekken, they only play with their friends or they swap characters. Um, I feel like a lot of us have these little goals that we set for ourselves where it's like, I wanna get this number of characters to Mighty Ruler or this many characters to Fujin. I'm trying to get everybody to red ranks, whatever the case may be. I also feel like red ranks is where a lot of people get hard stuck. And what you'll notice is that the first rank of every color, so I know it's a little bit hard to decipher because obviously these uh, this is not uh, in, in color with everything like it was in the, in the rank distribution video. Um, but if you know the ranks, if you've been playing Tekken, you know, Vanquisher is the first orange rank, God is the first red rank, Mighty Rule is the first purple rank, so on and so forth. Um, you'll notice that the first rank in every color is usually the most populated in that color, right? So Vanquisher has the most players in orange rank, God has the most players uh, in, in red rank, Mighty Rule has the most players in purple rank. Um, and then it, it falls off as it goes on, except for Eliminator in orange rank, where you will notice there are more players in Eliminator than there are in Destroyer. And I think that's because a lot of people get hard stuck here in Gaudi, which is probably why so many people put the ranks down or put their character down when they reach this point. I've seen a lot of my friends actually get stuck at this em Eliminator to Gaudi, uh like wall, I guess. And that's where a lot of players hit that first plateau. You see this again uh, in Tenduri and Mighty Ruler, in my opinion, it's not nearly as drastic, right? Uh, but I've just seen a lot of people get stuck there as well. That's kind of where they hit their second wall, that second plateau. When it comes to like rank and skill level, I, I've said this before, obviously there is some correlation between your rank and your skill level. What, something I've noticed or I've realized though, as I've done these videos and as I've discussed with you guys and read comments and everything is that there's a disconnect between myself and how I view ranks and skill levels and how a lot of you guys do as well. And that's fine. Like we don't, we don't have to agree. I, I think for me though, because I, 
I hold myself to a certain standard and because I'm comparing myself and just gameplay in general to the absolute highest level, which is obviously unfair. Everybody's not a top player, right? But that's just that's just how I view things. My perspective is skewed compared to like what I guess would be the norm or the general populace, because if you're a god of your rank and you're in the 73rd percentile, well, then you're better than the majority of players. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's obvious. And like, I'm a blue rank, right? So I'm a rising. So this is where I fall right now, which I believe puts me in like the 98th percentile so it's like there's only two percent of players that play the game that are of higher level of higher rank than me so like that should mean that i'm really good at the game but because of how i view myself i don't really see it that way that's not really that important i just kind of want to make a mental note of that we can move on though to the character popularity or the character play rates so this is divided into two different graphs we have the most popular characters across all levels and then we have the most popular characters across the advanced levels which is the purple ranks and above so we'll start off with the first chart so you will see here that by far the well i shouldn't say by far because there's a close second but the most popular and the most played character in the game across all skill levels is actually none other than king now, i don't know about you guys but this comes as no surprise or no shock to me whatsoever king is very powerful in this game and very easy to pick up and play then you move on you have reyna in second place who is also very very powerful but is not nearly as easy to pick up and play as king is now i know i've made my jokes and my memes about reyna I definitely ruffled some feathers in my last video talking about how carried are you in Tekken 8. Uh, but Reyna is genuinely a, a, a difficult character to play and certainly much more difficult than King is. Uh, but what's most interesting to me is that Jin is third and that's 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 nothing too crazy because he's the most he's the poster boy for the game. He's a very popular character ever since Tekken 3 where he was first introduced. And um, you know the poster boy characters are always very popular I feel like. Uh, but the one that stands out to me is Huarong in fourth place. That's a huge shock to me. That's a huge surprise to me. And my question is, how many of you guys in my comments actually play this character? I'm really shocked to see the Huarong increase because he's never been anywhere near this popular before. And he's never been like bottom five, like some of these characters down here that we'll talk about in just a moment. But I wonder what it is that appeals to people all of a sudden and makes him so much um, more common. Now, that could be the reputation he has about being free wins or being very spammy and easy to pick up and play, which is kind of cap. But I could see why at a low level uh, he does really well because I'm wondering how much of that has to do with the fact he has that 4-4, four, 4-4 four, four, four string where he just does like all those those kicks really quick. By the way, those are all highs. You can duck that and launch punish him forward if you nice or just regular punish if you want something simple, quick and easy, um, like a while standing four or a while standing two or whatever, right? Well, for some characters, that might be a launch punish if you do a while standing two. Um, but yeah, I, I wonder what it is. And it's interesting because you have King, right? Who is actually very powerful and is very easy to pick up and play. Reyna, who's not nearly as easy to pick up and play, but is also very powerful. Jin, I, I think is strong. I'm not exactly sure why I put him on the list, but I think he's not exactly the easiest character to pick up and play, but not the hardest. But Huarong is just, he feels like such an outlier. And then we have Dragonoff, who I think is very easy to pick up and play and is very, very strong. So that's not really much of a surprise. Kazuya, respectively, here at six, very difficult to play, but very popular always. Uh, Victor at Nazu, Senna, Steve, Law, June, Yoshimitsu, Brian, Lily, Paul, Devil Jin, Lars, Asuka, Lee, Alyssa, Xiaoyu, Fang, Nina, Leo, Jack, Eight, Raven, Claudio, Kuma, Leroy, Shaheen, Zafina, and Panda. I think historically, the Bears are always the least popular characters in the game, so Kuma being relatively low and then Panda being at the bottom comes as no surprise. Zafina being low is also no shock either. I think she was very unpopular for the most part since her introduction in Tekken 6 and then in, also in Tag 2. She, there was demand for her in, in Tekken 7 and they brought her back as DLC and she was very powerful, which made her more popular. But since she's not like top five in this game, she's fallen off significantly, which comes as no shock to me. Um, but I want you to take note of these characters down here in the bottom five, okay? I want you to take note of Panda, Zafina, Shaheen, Leroy, and Kuma. Maybe not so much Leroy, but there's some data we're gonna look over later, Claudio as well. Um, that as we continue on with this video, that's very interesting about these characters down here at the bottom, okay? So keep those in mind. That said though, I don't think there's any other like real surprises here in this data. Uh, Paul's usually a little bit more popular than this, I feel like, but maybe the hairstyle has a lot to do with it. I do feel like the aesthetics and appearance of a character play a large role in the popularity of characters. I know that for me, that's a big reason why I play some of the characters that I play. Uh, Steve is not considered particularly strong in this game, but he is uh, pretty cool in a lot of people's eyes. So he's he's actually surprisingly popular or not. He's unsurprisingly popular. But uh, I would say that loosely you would see for the most part, characters who have a reputation for being pretty strong are the ones that occupy most of the top spot, which I guess is only about half. So like I said, it's a pretty loose correlation, but I think that'll change a little bit as we scroll down and take a look at the advanced uh, character popularity. So again, these are the character play rates for, for players who are at purple ranks and above. And what you'll notice is that Dragonov at this point becomes the most played character uh, in the game once you're at Mighty Ruler or higher. Now, to me, the biggest shock here is that if you look, 
Yoshimitsu jumps up from, I believe, 12th place all the way to the fifth most played character. And that's really interesting to me. Like Yoshimitsu being relatively popular is no surprise because I think Tekken 8 Yoshimitsu might be his coolest design yet, both gameplay and moveset wise, as well as his physical appearance. I think his aesthetic in this game is just the, the coolest and illest Yoshimitsu design that we've ever had. That's just my opinion. You may disagree, but you let me know. Um, but jumping up to fifth place is a huge surprise to me. Wadong falling to sixth. And even then, I'm still pretty surprised by that. Um, but Victor and Azure Santa kind of holding on strong. Brian's still up there. Law still up there. Kazuya falling a little bit. Um, but for the most part, there's no other like real major surprises. King falls to second, Reina falls to third. Uh, Dragonov, in my opinion, is one of, if not the best characters in the game. I think we all pretty much agree with that for the most part, but there's a couple of other contenders. But I don't really find too much else about this that shocking. Uh, as you can see here, for the most part, a lot of things kind of stay the same. Pandas and Fiend are still at the very bottom. Shaheen moves up one spot over Leroy, but they're relatively still in the same spot. Claudio's still very low. Um, for the most part, things are pretty much the same slight shifts like one or two spaces yoshimitsu being the one that makes the biggest jump which is i just didn't see that coming now we move on to character win rates and this is where things get pretty interesting so if we scroll down these are the character win rates across all skill levels and number one on this list is none other than fang who in my opinion is a contender for the best character in the game now i know i said dragonov is in that conversation but there are several characters in that conversation. The game is still relatively young. It's only been a little over a month, maybe a month and a half that the game has been out now. So still a lot of things to see, a lot of things to figure out. We still haven't had too many majors, although I did see uh, Africa Tekken League hosted a tournament in Korea that had several top players in attendance. And that kind of gave me some things to think about and some, uh, some, some data to collect of my own, right? Uh, but Fang is a character that seems very, very, very powerful in this game. And it's no shock to me that he has a very high win rate. Now, this is the part that's interesting. So after Fang, if we move along down the list, you can see that the next character with the highest win rate is actually Kuma, followed by Alyssa, Panda, Jack-8, Dragonov, Claudio, Nina, Zafina, Lars, Lee, Devil Jin, Victor, Law, Shaheen, Jin, Paul, Raven, Leo, King. You can see the rest of the names here. I don't have to read off every single one for you. But the thing that's interesting to note is that if we look at these characters up here at the top, right, you see Kuma, Alyssa, Panda, and Jack-8. Now, if Alyssa aside, these are some interesting picks because Kuma and Panda are some of the least played characters in the game. They're also not considered particularly strong, and yet they have the highest win rates or among the highest win rates in the game. Alyssa is also a character that's not like significantly popular, right? Like she's kind of actually on the lower end if we look at the advanced and even at the general popularity, right? Where is she here in general popularity? Yeah, she's still kind of closer to the middle, I guess, but still somewhere on the lower end. Well, I guess she's actually in the exact same spot now that I look at it, right? Um, But she has one of the highest win rates in the game. Same thing goes for Jack-8. Jack-8 is actually uh, below Alyssa in terms of popularity and yet has one of the highest win rates in the game. Why is that? And Dragonov, who's considered one of the strongest characters in the game and one of the easiest characters in the game, much like Fang, uh, actually has a lower win rate than these characters. And the honest answer for that is that uh, these characters right here have some really strong gimmicks that most people don't know how to deal with because <laughs> you never see them because they're so unpopular. And that, that's just the honest truth. You can, you can say what you want about that. You can feel how you want about that. But one of the most powerful tools that you can have in a fighting game, and especially in Tekken, is knowledge. And the most powerful tool that you can also lack is knowledge. And these are characters that if you don't have knowledge on how to fight them, you kind of get smoked. And the thing about Fang is that unlike Dragonov, Fang is not that popular. Like if we scroll back up, Fang is actually on the lower end of popularity in this game. That's for all levels. And even at the higher level, he still is not significantly high on the list. In, in fact, he doesn't really creep up that much. He's relatively low on this list and he's about middle of the road at the advanced level, right? But if you ask most players who have played the game, and especially if you're talking to uh, like top players or skilled or experienced like Tekken veterans, they're gonna tell you that Fang is one of the strongest characters in the game. And so I think part of that is that like he's lesser played and so there's more players who are good that are playing him and players that are taking advantage of how strong he is. And he's also kind of uncommon. So it's catching a lot of people off guard. Uh, so he's not quite in the same camp as these characters in terms of like, uh, oh, they're just beating you because they, they, you don't know any better. But it's like Fang is, is, is genuinely really strong and you don't know any better. And I feel the same way about Alyssa. I think Alyssa's a character that I would personally place in the top 10 of like a tier list or like, you know, character strength in this game. And she's not that common. So like when you come across one, you you don't get bodied pretty easily because she's got some things that are like gimmicky, cheesy, whatever, chainsaws or OD. And there's just certain things where if you don't know the matchup, if you ain't got the knowledge, you're gonna get steamrolled, right? And then even when you do have the matchup knowledge, you still could get steamrolled because she is genuinely a very powerful character. Now I could talk all day long about these things. I have like so many like notes I wanna make and things like that. But the other most interesting thing about this graph is that Reyna players are getting 
bodied. Reyna has by far the lowest win rate in the game. Wadong, despite being as popular as he is, also has a relatively low win rate compared to the majority of the cast, as do Sana being this low is also quite the surprise, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of hard to say. June is also really, really low. And, you know, I think the interesting part about these characters having such low win rates despite being so strong is that I think... I think maybe Azucena's popularity is like hurting her here a little bit. Same thing goes for Rana, where a lot of people pick these characters up and they hear that these characters are very strong, so they think they're gonna get some easy wins and it don't really go that way. Now, the Azucena one's much more of a surprise because like Azucena, I think is, I, I play Azucena, okay? She's my like secondary character, my pocket character. I've been playing a lot of rank with her, but like if you wanna know my rank, I have her at Battle Ruler, which is like not super, super high, but it's respectable. You know what I'm saying like it's high. I'm sure I could get her to blue ranks if I played a little bit more. Just been really focused on Huarong, but I genuinely think that character is stupid strong and super super easy to play like i i think she's a top three character uh honestly i think she's in that conversation she might even be number one i, I mentioned that that korean tekken tournament that i watched earlier there were four azure senders and four dragonovs <laughs> and fang was in there too um uh, and obviously that's nine characters I, I said it was a top eight you know players were playing multiple characters but like dragonov made like four appearances as i said they made like four appearances so uh, you know what i'm saying like the character is very very strong I, i'm clearly not the only one who thinks that i think most people think that she's strong but it's just interesting to see same thing goes for june though june is one of those characters that's in the conversation for being like one of the best characters in the game and same thing goes for xiao yu and yet they're very very low on this list the other characters down here is to be expected right like steve's not considered very strong leo is not considered very strong kazi is a very difficult character to play asuka is not considered super strong she's got like some some cheese some strings some gimmicks or whatever but like you know what i'm saying she, there's june is like is asuka but like way better in pretty much every single way and there's a ton of other characters that are much stronger but it's just like it's really interesting and if we scroll down and look at the advanced win rates you can see that kazuya actually becomes the lowest character and reyna does jump up a little bit and what this tells me is that at the lower level reyna players are struggling very very bad partially because of her difficulty her complexity as a character and then also just because that she's so unbelievably popular that there's a lot of people who are brand new to tekken and are struggling and they just and they, they, they kind of catching the hand. Uh, but yeah, there are several interesting things to note here. So let's, I, I know I went right to Kazi, but let's, 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 let's just jump back up to the top for a second. Here we have Panda, Zafina, Shaheen, and Kuma as the top four characters with the highest win rates in the game at Mighty Ruler or above. So remember earlier when I was talking about character popularity, right? And I said to remember these characters down here, Panda, Safina, Shaheen, Leroy, Kuma, Claudio as well. Remember when I said to take note of those characters? One character I forgot to mention on the win rates is Claudio is really high on this list, right behind Dragunov. Still really high on this list, and this time above Dragunov, up there with Alyssa. It's no surprise, and it's no shock to me. It's interesting, but no shock that Panda, Safina, Shaheen, and Kuma have some of the highest win rates in the game. The Bears are some of the most gimmicky, like, weird troll characters in the game right they are cheese incarnate okay at the lower levels you're gonna get some free ass wins and even at the higher levels you're gonna get some free wins because some people myself included don't do their homework we don't lab the matchup the bears have funky and wonky hit boxes they have really weird strings they have moves that look like they're really plus even though it's minus five like that big ass bear swipe that bear players like to use back to back as if it's plus but in reality it's still your turn a lot of y'all don't know that i didn't know that till recently because it looks plus so you respect it so they get away with bs like that because we don't do our homework we don't know the matchup but i learned that by looking at my replays um but yeah it's it's no surprise to me it's zafina not considered particularly strong the bear is not considered particularly strong but they're so uncommon that people just don't have the knowledge and what did i say earlier the most powerful tool you have in tekken is knowledge and the most powerful tool you can lack is knowledge and if you don't have the matchup knowledge you're gonna get smoked the proof is in the pudding the evidence is right here zafina players are getting a lot of free wins panda players is getting a lot of free wins and shaheen players shaheen is flying under the radar uh, Kuma and Pan, like I said, we put notes together. Claudio is another character that's very unpopular. He's very low uh, on on the pick list, right? So if you go back over here, he's one of like the top like six least played characters in the game, right? Was one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, the six least picked character at all levels, right? One, two, three, four, five, and still in the exact same spot. Um, and yet the characters that are dominating the, the charts are the ones who are played the least that you see the least. And what this tells me is that for one, obviously uh, there are a lot of people who aren't doing their homework, but it also tells me that hey, at, at any level, bro, you could get caught slipping. You, you could get caught slipping. You could get caught lacking by these characters. I also, like I said, I think Alyssa falls somewhat in this category, but I also think that she's genuinely strong. Cause the thing about the bears and Zafina is that like, that is mostly just like a lack of matchup knowledge. And part of that is Alyssa as well, but I genuinely think that she has really strong tools. Claudio, I don't really know what to make of that. I think Claudio just might be a character who's like secretly flying under the radar. He's also pretty simple to pick up and play. I would say he's not like a superly uh, over, overly complicated, like co complex character, like really, really difficult to learn. Um, and part of that might have something to go into it. Uh, but then you have Dragunov, who's like 
very very blatantly obviously strong powerful like one of the best characters in the game pretty easy to pick up and play and like and that shows at all levels when he even he's getting outclassed by the, the cheese characters you know what i'm saying also worth noting nina nina's very high on this list uh both at the beginner or at the all levels and at the advanced levels uh string cheese the character for sure right <laughs> nina players is getting away with murder because he ain't we ain't doing a homework you know what i'm saying I would say the other like most shocking thing here that's worth noting is that Azusana is still just middle of the road. This is a character that I would expect to be up here like with Dragonov, or at least somewhere in this general area. But her and Victor side by side, they're buddies. I didn't mean to open up a new tab there. I'm uh, I'm just a little bit surprised to not see her higher on the list. Then you also have King. King, I think my theory about characters like Azusana, Victor, Huarong, King, these are characters whose popularity uh, and ease of use at first kind of like betray them, right? And this is just my theory, right? Like you, this, this could be right, this could be wrong. You could agree, you could disagree. But these are characters that early on when you pick them, you get a lot of free wins. And then as you start to climb the ranks, you realize, oh man, I'm not a, as, as good at this game as I thought I was. I'm starting to struggle and hit those plateaus. And I think that's why you see them higher on the list, or at least you see King higher on the list than you do down here. As the same is actually lower on the list because I think there's so many beginners playing her and then she goes up because the more advanced you go, people are like, oh, they really know how to abuse the things that are good about her. But then you could say the same thing applies to King. So why is that not the case? Because you know what this tells me? The average Azucena player is better than the average King player, <laughs> or it just means that Azucena is just better than King, uh, which is probably more likely the case. Uh, but that being said, Kazuya, one of the harder characters to play in the game, seems really difficult to rank up with. But Reyna does get a boost here in the win rates when you look at the advanced stats. And to me, that says that as you go up in the ranks, players are starting to figure out what her strong tools are and how to make use of them. And uh, I I think that Reyna and Kazuya are both characters that at the... Uh, the intermediate, like upper intermediate level of play are like kind of at their strongest, right? Early on, they're very difficult because you don't have like super gimmicky, super cheesy stuff to like abuse and like uh, overpower people with, especially in Kazuya's case, right? Then as you learn the game and get a little bit better, like, okay, these are what my strengths are. This is how I use this stuff. And it gets really strong, really strong, really strong, or it gets stronger and stronger. And then you hit a certain level and it's like, oh man, okay, I'm finding some really good players now that also are playing characters that have stuff that I have to respect that they can abuse a lot easier than I can. And it's like at the high level, this stuff's still really good, especially in Reyna's case, but you might be working a little bit harder. And it's just, you know what I'm saying? I, I feel like that, like in the beginning, like characters like Reyna and Kanzi are like really weak and they get really strong and then they kind of fall off again. You know what I'm saying? And then you kind of have to, you know, work pretty hard to, to make to make them work. Now, Reyna, I do think is probably a hell of a lot stronger than Kazuya. I think most people would agree that Reyna is a top tier character, but I don't have her above characters like Dragunov or Fang or Azusana, uh, but that's just me. You might disagree. I don't know. And time will tell. Like I said, the game's still relatively young. It's only been out for a month and a half at this point. So we'll see how things continue to play out as time goes on. And I can't wait for Evo Japan to see what characters we end up seeing, like in, in some of those high levels and who ends up making an appearance in that top eight. Uh, so anyway, there's one more graphic I kind of want to take a look at real quick. Um, and if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see here is the rank distribution comparison from the February 15th distribution uh, to March 1st. And what you'll notice here is that you see a, a huge spike um, in the earlier ranks uh, as of late. And you would think that this would flatten out a little bit more and it would make more progression toward the right as opposed to the left. I have a theory about this, right? If you've been around the community in the scene, you know that like we just recently, I say we, I wasn't part of it, but Sejam hosted this event called his Tekken Slam or the Sejam Slam, uh, where he had a bunch of coaches who were veteran uh, fighting game players or Tekken players for the most part. Tekken players outside of Justin Wong, who's just a veteran fighting game player, uh, that, that were the captains of uh, different teams that had several streamers and content creators who weren't normally fighting game players, but are large streamers. So you had people like Boxbox, Sidian, Skara, Saikuno, a couple of VTubers in there as well, right? So you had all these big streamers who have like thousands upon thousands of viewers playing the game, practicing and training in anticipation for this event. Some of them because they were already interested in the game and some of them because they were practicing for this. Um, and obviously that that increased popularity of the game. The, 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 the game's viewership has been increasing on YouTube. It's been increasing on Twitch. I'm sure it had an, an impact on the sales. And so I think you're seeing all this. I think this is a direct correlation, a direct uh, impact and result of these big streamers playing the game and getting more people interested in the game. And that's why you're seeing more, uh, more people over here. Uh, not quite factual himself makes a note here and says, we can see the distribution has shifted a fair deal in these two weeks. The middle ranks seem to have flattened out and now we see a lot more players in the early ranks. This is a rather unexpected result. I expected we see some rank inflation due to how the rank system works, as well as the fact that many people are still climbing to their natural rank. This unexpected distribution can indicate a large number of new players joining rank, which is what I think it actually is. But I frankly don't know what to make of this. And like I said, I think this actually is a, a, a direct result of all these very large streamers playing Tekken and, and by, by proxy or like, you know, by influence getting their viewers to also try the game out. Also, 
Funny note here. Finally, we see that Xiaoyu has a low to middling win rate at all skill brackets. It is thus my completely unbiased opinion as a diligent member of the Ling Nation that Xiaoyu is a fair and balanced character who does not yet deserve nerfs. I don't really have a strong opinion one way or the other about whether or not Xiaoyu needs nerfs, but I do think she is actually one of the strongest characters in the game. Uh, and then here we have the percentiles for each rank. So as I mentioned earlier, if you make it to Gadiu, which is the first red rank, you're in the top 73 percentile. If you make it to the Mighty Ruler, the purple rank, you're in the 89th percentile, or you could round up to 90, I guess. And if you make it to Fujin, you're in the 97th percentile. Like I said before, I am currently rising with Huarong, so that puts me in the 98th percentile. If you make it to Tekken King, you're in the 99th percentile, and you're basically in the top 1% of players, and so on and so forth. You see the numbers here for yourself. But uh, yeah, I know that was a lot to digest. There was a lot to go over and talk about in this video. Honestly, I could have broken this up into like maybe three separate videos itself if I really wanted, which might not have been a bad idea because it would have given me more time to like breathe and spread things out and then talk more about my thoughts and, and, and my notes and everything like that. But um, really interesting data. And I'm going to try to keep tabs on stuff like this and, and be more punctual with it and not be a week late to the data because it's probably already in the process of like collecting like the next wave of results and everything like that. And when, when that time comes around, I will definitely make a video talk about it. But uh. Really interesting stuff. So some big surprises in here for sure. But what do you guys make of all this? And what do you guys feel? Uh, and what are you thinking after seeing this data? Any any thoughts, any comments, any big surprises to you guys? Let me know in the comment section down below. Hit this video with a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already so you can stay tuned for all the awesome content that I'm bringing you. With all of being said, this is pretty much off today. Remember, nothing can happen to you. It's from the bad. Later.